Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. Today we're gonna take a step away from bodywork on the A86 Corolla and try a little project that I've had in mind just to see if I can actually do it. If you all own an A86, you know all the prices and parts for these once cheap old cars have skyrocketed in the past couple years due to particular anime series or drifting. Um, prices for parts have gone up quite a bit over the past couple years. Personally, my preference when it comes to these cars is the JDM look. Of course, with JDM parts and living in the United States, it's super hard to get a hold of any of these parts and prices are out the roof. The end goal for this car is to pretty much have everything I can JDM. With taillights as well, I do want to get a set of Zinke JDM taillights, um, but again, they're hard to come by and they're super expensive when you do find some. So I decided I wanted to try and do a little project. And as you can see back here, I've got the stock Zinke taillights for an A86, and I want to try and do a smoked JDM look to those taillights, a little bit of a DIY. Of course, the reverse lights and some of the brake lights aren't in the right spot, but I do think I can fix these and make them look pretty close to the real thing. In particular, you can see with these taillights, there are some damage. I've got a big crack here and some stress cracks in this reverse light. Same thing over here, some stress cracks super faded and also I've got chips up here too, chip right there uh, and a chip down here as well. So as you can see the stock A86 taillights that I have are in rough shape. Perfect contenders for this little project. They're already in super bad shape but with a little time and effort I think I can make these taillights look pretty close to the real deal. All in all it's going to take a little bit of time and probably about $30 to make these look as close as I can. Again, this is the first time I've ever done anything like this, so they may turn out complete crap. And I will show you all the final result even if I'm not happy with it. Just because I want to show you all the process and show you that you can do these sorts of projects on your own and you know, don't be afraid to try some new stuff out. Alright guys, so before I move on any further, I want to explain the process behind fixing these taillights. I've been thinking about it and all the research that I've done has led me to four different steps. Step one, we're going to be repairing the taillights. And in order to do that, I'm going to be using a mixture of clear epoxy and some paints that I got from Walmart for about 50 cents a piece. And I'll get into that process a little bit more once I start mixing up the epoxy and the paint. So after the damage has been fixed, step two is gonna be sand down the taillights and prep them for the smoking process. So step three will be actually smoking the taillights. In order to do that, I'm going to be using Nightshades, which is a spray sort of translucent black paint. For me, I am not going to be blacking out taillights. I'm just gonna try and get a smoking effect, um, just like the JDM taillights. If you take a look at a picture of the JDM A86 taillights, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. And that is what I'm looking for, not pitch black, not super dark. I do want it to still be visible, and I don't want the taillights to result in accidents later on down the road. After smoking the taillights, the last step, step four, is going to be clear coating them. And in order to clear coat, I'm gonna be using this clear coat from Spraymax, and I've got the number right there in case you all want to check it out. And I'll put all of these products in the description as well. So the really cool thing about this clear coat is that it is actually automotive grade. So this has a activator in it as well. In order to do that, you have to pop the bottom and release the activator into the can of clear coat. So this actually sprays out as an automotive clear, a 2K clear with a with the clear and the activator mixed in one. So that's a quick overview of the process. Let's go ahead and start mixing up some test batches of epoxy and paint. Let's see if we can't get these taillights looking somewhat decent by the end of this video. All 
Alright guys, so here's some mixed up paints. This one actually has a little bit of this yellow in there as well. I think that color is actually pretty close. Out of all of these, I think the one that's probably going to be the best bet is this one right here, Vivid Orange. It's about as close as I think I'm going to get. Let's see what it looks like close to the tail light. So you can obviously tell that one's way too uh, reddish for that sort of color. Over here, that one's really not bad. On camera, it looks like it's a little bit bigger of a difference, but this is actually really close. I, I think this is probably the color I'm gonna use. And then we have the spiced orange as well, which uh, mixed with the yellow, I think, is actually pretty close too. Huh. It's actually really close. Let me give it a couple minutes and see if it, uh, I don't know if it dries a little bit different or something. All right, so this tail light is actually already a little scuffed up and the color is a little bit more faded than what it's gonna look like when all the clear coat's on there. So let me swap out with the other tail light. Here's what the other tail light looks like and what the color will, I guess, will look like more when the clear coat is on there. When looking at this color, I, th I really do think Vivid Orange is probably a little bit better. So the good thing with this taillight and the damage up here is it actually hasn't cracked into the housing itself, so it doesn't really need to be all that translucent. I just need to have something that fills in that gap right there and doesn't look as damaged right there and down at the bottom. And I really think this vivid orange is probably the closest I'm going to get to that particular color. So the epoxy has been applied to the taillights and now I have to wait about 30 minutes or so for it to fully cure. After it cures, I'll come out here, we'll sand down the spots, make them all nice and flat, and then shape them up a little bit more so it looks like it goes with the lines of the taillight. The color of epoxy is not 100% perfect, but it is pretty close, and I think once it's all sanded down, I think it's going to blend in a lot more. Again, this is not going to be a perfect fix. But for, I mean, under 30 bucks, what can you ask for? So while we wait for the epoxy to fully cure, let's move on to this tail light, start sanding it down, and get it prepped for the smoking process. So first things first, I'm gonna try and get whatever clear coat is on here currently. Uh, it looks like at some point in time somebody tried to clear these, but didn't do that good of a job. So I'm gonna start off with 120 grit and start sanding this all down. I actually wanna delete all of these raised Toyota numbers and all that kind of stuff. I know that some people probably aren't gonna like that, but I think when it's all said and done, it's gonna make it look really sleek with all of this sanded all the way down. So let's go ahead and get sanding and see, uh, see how they turn out. I also want to mention, first I'm starting just dry sanding and then I will move into wet sanding. So I do recommend getting some water with some soap in it for the wet sanding portion as well. Still definitely need to sand a little bit more up here, uh, down here a little bit. As you can see, all the Toyota and all the raised pieces are sanded down, so that's cool. A little bit more up in here. There's still some remaining clear coat that I need to sand off.
All right, let's go ahead and move up to 220 and try and get rid of these 120 scratches. Now let's wet sand with 320 grit. So now this spot right here is actually a crack in the light. It is cracked all the way through. I can feel it with my fingernail. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a Dremel and I'm just gonna make a little dip all the way down that crack. And then I'll fill that with some of that two-part epoxy that we did on the other tail light. Be very careful when doing this step. You don't wanna sand all the way through the, head, the tail light. And that's all you need, just a little dip in there that we will fill with the two-part clear epoxy. So we are pretty much at a standstill now. I have to wait for the epoxy to cure. The epoxy in here that took care of those cracks that were in this tail light. And then over here, we have the epoxy that's colored. And I still have to wait for that to completely cure before I can start shaping it and sanding it down to blend into the tail light. So I've given the tail lights a full day to cure. Color's not 100% perfect, but I think after sanding this and shaping it up a little bit, it's gonna look pretty good. So these chips are completely fixed and sealed, as well as this. Um, there was a crack here, crack here, and a crack here that was actually leaking. You can see in there, that's the milky water from sanding, these, sanding this set of tail lights. So we're gonna sand all that out, sand all this out, and prep them for the smoking process. is done and is sanded up to 1500 grit so let's go ahead and start on this other tail light so here's the next tail light when I first got these tail lights and had this idea of fixing them I tried to sand them down a little bit but I got discouraged it was a lot of work so I said screw it until later on so I need to get rid of some of this raised lettering, the Toyota here, Toyota here, and some of the numbers on this side. We're gonna start with a pretty high grit. Probably gonna start off with 220 and try and even all that out. And then we will progress through the grits there, especially focusing on this portion right here and this portion down here. All right, so I have all the lettering sanded down. Next, we're gonna move on to this, and I can tell you right now, this epoxy is gonna need a lot higher grit. I put a little too much on there, but we'll do a higher grit and start sanding all this down and making it look a little bit more flush than it does right now. And to form the epoxy, we're gonna start with 120.
Alright guys, so I took a Dremel and kind of shaped up this epoxy just a little bit. Same with this portion down here. Shaped it up a little bit and it's starting to look pretty good. Now that the epoxy is sh shaped a little bit, let's go ahead and move on to 220 again to get all of these 120 scratches out and then we will progress through the grits from there. Now that this is all sanded down with 220, we're going to move on to 320. Uh, it's pretty much the same exact process as earlier. I'm not going to go through every single step so we can get to be smoking these taillights. Alright guys, so the sanding process for the taillight lenses is now complete. And just to recap, here are the grits that we went through, 120. Then from 120 we went to 220, both of those were dry sanded. And then after 220 we moved on to 320, which we started wet sanding. And then 600, 800, 1200, and then 1500. And here's how they turned out. And here are the taillights repaired and sanded down. Over on this one, we fixed cracks here, here, and a crack here. The good thing about these cracks is they have been repaired and they're not going to leak anymore. It's consistently sanded down. We do have a little bit of a matte surface on there, which is what you want when you're painting. The paint needs something to adhere to and these little fine scratch marks are perfect. Again, this is 1500. Over here on this side, we repaired two um, actually missing pieces out of this tail light here and then down here as well has been repaired with epoxy and paint. Again, the color is not perfect, but it is pretty close, and I think it's gonna look just fine, especially when we use the nightshades on here. I think it's gonna kinda tone down this difference, but for me, I'm happy with it. I think it turned out really good, so I'm definitely cool with that repair. Hey guys, so we're back in the garage, and I wanna get back onto the taillights, and the goal for today is to get them both painted in a couple, maybe one or two coats of VHT nightshades. So I've got them all set up. I'm gonna wipe them down with silicone wax and grease remover, and then let's go ahead and get going on smoking these taillights. Alright guys, so these taillights have dried for about an hour and a half or so. I'm going to take some soapy water and some 2000 grit sandpaper and try to take a little bit of the tinting off these. It's a little too dark for my liking. And I'm not sure if this is shadow or like striping in here or if that's actually on the inside of the taillight. So, not quite sure, but uh, let's try and sand them down a little bit with 2000 grit and get rid of some of that smoking effect. Well, sometimes things just don't work out the way you expected them to, and this is a prime example of exactly that. Again, uh, this whole project is, well, pretty much any project that I do um, is a trial and error sort of project, so stuff that I've never done before, I've gotta try certain things, mess up, fix it, you know, and figure out what I'm doing in order for the next time to be a little bit easier. Unfortunately, using the nightshade stuff, Man, that stuff, even just one coat of nightshades is super dark. I don't know if I'm just, if I'm not maybe spraying it up high enough or something, but I can't get the right tinting on these taillights. So basically, I just took a thousand grit, sanded them down. Uh, I don't even know if there's any nightshades still on the taillights, but when they're wet, they look pretty good. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and just clear coat them now. I've spent way too much time out here in the garage. I think it's almost like 2 a.m. And I just want to get this done. But anyway, let's get these taillights in a couple coats of the Spray Max Clear 2K and see how they turn out. Now 
This stuff is super nasty. Make sure you wear a respirator and have proper ventilation when you spray this. The directions say to go ahead and shake the can up for two minutes, then pop the top, pop it in the bottom, and then shake for an additional two minutes. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so it's been about two minutes, so let's go ahead and pop the top, or pop this little red thing out. Just so stick it on this thing, and then hammer it against a flat surface with your fist, like that. So let me move you all real quick, and then we'll do this. Here goes nothing. I felt like I did it. Now shake it for another two minutes. All right, guys, it's shook up, so let's go ahead and get some coats of paint on there. Alright guys, so that's a wrap for the AE86 taillight restoration video. I hope you all enjoyed it and maybe you learned a thing or two throughout the video. And I mean, look at these taillights. What a result for really 30 bucks. I mean, I, I couldn't be any happier. Now did I get the JDM look that I was shooting for originally? Not really. But am I happy with the results? Absolutely. I do think they are a little bit tinted compared to stock taillights. But I mean, they're 32 years old. They look like they just rolled out of Toyota's parts department. I might be stretching the truth just a little bit there, but the real MVP in this project is this stuff right here. This 2K Clear is magic in an aerosol can. I mean, no joke. Let me show you a close-up of these taillights and just show you the finish. This is without sanding anything. I haven't sanded any of the orange peel out. There is a little bit of orange peel in there, but nothing more than like a stock orange peel on, uh, you know, the paint on somebody's car. I mean, look at this thing. I mean, legitimately, you can see the reflection of the camera and everything in this. I mean, they really, they turned out amazing. Even the damaged areas turned out pretty well. I mean, you still see a little bit of the damage up there. And I tinted this portion a little bit more than I probably should have. But, I mean, you wouldn't, unless you were looking, you wouldn't know that they were chipped from the get-go. Now, in another video, I'll probably end up sanding all the orange peel out of this paint so I can make it almost like a mirror. There are ways to do that. I just didn't really want to touch it right now because I don't want to screw it up. So, I'm going to leave them the way they are for a little bit. But overall, I mean, I'm super happy with it. If anyone is considering restoring their headlights or taillights or using any sort of spray can clear, I'm telling you guys, spend the money on this Spray Max 2K. They are not sponsoring me in any way, shape, or form. I just can't believe how nice this, I mean, you saw how it was spraying out of the can. It was almost like a paint gun. So it's literally the best clear coat you're going to get out of a spray can, hands down. My opinion, maybe there's better, but I mean, I got a two pack for I think 40 something dollars. They're about $20 a can. You can probably find them cheaper. Just spend the money on this clear coat um, and don't go with any of that Rust-Oleum spray clear it works but it's nowhere near as good as this stuff all right and that about wraps it up 
If you all enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel and like this sort of content, click that subscribe button. I think it's over there, I think. If you all learned a thing or two from this video as well and think that others will benefit from it, please feel free to share the video. I don't care. Anybody can share it to wherever they want. Um, I just want to kind of spread the information and hopefully help out as many people as I can with this walkthrough. If you all have any comments or questions on any of the videos I have or just questions in general towards the A86 or projects or any sort of garage fabrication, just stick a message down in the comments section and I'll be sure to reply to you. Again, thank you all for all those who have subscribed so far. I really hope you enjoy the content and there's much more to come. As always, thank you all for your support and until next time, I'll see you later.